if you ask them what you're doing, you know, they're like, oh, I have friends coming over, like college friends, like, yeah, I'm like, oh, you know, look at all these, or whatever. I just want to watch family, go, oh, man, this is for you. It's wonderful. But I've never really bought drugs from a drug dealer, okay? So whenever I have to do that, I get very nervous. It's not my thing. Especially in other foreign countries where I don't know the laws. So people are like, yeah, it's no big deal, but I get fucking strange. So I was in Cambodia, I met my friend who was like a real drug addict. Her name is Sarah. Yeah, the last time I met her was at some full moon party in Thailand, and she was like cutting up a pill. And I was like, What are you doing? She's like, I'm cutting up uh, Ritalin. And I was like, Why are you cutting up Ritalin? She goes, Because we're snorting Ritalin. I was like, All right, I guess so. I was Ritalin, is that what you're asking? It was great. My grades got better. I was able to concentrate in class. <laughs> Anyway, so we went into some place, uh, any Rasta bar, any place they sell, like, that looks like they sell weed, they do, but I still get nervous. So I went into this bar in Koh Rang, this island in Cambodia, and uh, I was like, I don't know how to do it. And Sarah's like, do you want me to do it for you? I'm like, yes, negotiate, ask them for it, I don't know. So I'm kind of hanging back, right? And we're on a budget, so she's also like really good at like budgeting, uh, like bargaining. You ask her anything, like she's like, how much for that shirt? And they'll be like, it's, a, as soon as she they start saying the price, she goes, come on! <laughs> Like, she doesn't even hear what they say. She's like, half of that. <laughs> anyway, so we went to this bartender at this place, and she's like, do you have, I was kind of hanging back, she's like, do you have marijuana? And he's like, yeah, yeah, and then like, he pulled it out, and she was like, negotiating the price with them, and then he just goes, hey, are you, are you already shipped here? <laughs> <laughs> and I live in Cambodia, and I was like, yeah, I am. And then Sarah and me, he's like, free weed, free weed. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, okay, free weed. So that was the only time I'd gotten it for a while, and it was fucking dirt, you know? You get what you can out there. Some people like mixed it with weed, with uh, tobacco, I mean, that splits. And I was like, no, I don't do that. I'm like, really, why don't you do that? I'm like, because in my country, the only people who do that are Europeans and black people, okay? <laughs> I smoke straight weed, that's what we do. Plus, your weed is so shitty, you don't have to mix it with anything. It's already garbage enough. You know. <laughs> so anyway, smoke some there, it was good. It still hits you. If you haven't smoked in a month, it fucking hits you, no matter how shitty it is. How shitty is it here in Nashville? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Like I shook his hand. I had this theory that people think about weed, uh, kind of like blowjobs, where they just go like, "My weed is good." Like you just mean weed is good. <laughs> you don't mean your weed is good. You've never really had amazing weed. So you're like, "Oh, it's amazing." I, my favorite thing to do with my New York friends, like, "No, oh, the weed in New York is good." And then I would come to um, LA, and I'd be like, "Get them some like real weed," and they'd smoke it. And they're like, "Oh, I see what you're talking about now." <laughs> I'm gonna need a couple days. <laughs> anyway, so no more weed after that for about a month. And then, here's the deal when you go to Southeast Asia, you don't start, the general rule is you don't start any trouble with locals because you'll never win that fight. You know, if you get into an argument, you're going to lose. If they have to go to the cops, they're not gonna take your side. You're obviously not from there. <laughs> you know, you're white as fuck. <laughs> it's like, there's no question. One of my friends are like, I don't want to take a camera because I don't want to look like a tourist. And I'm like looking at him. I'm like, listen, Derek. Uh, you look like a tourist regardless of whether or not you have a phone, okay? You're fucking Hollister flip-flops. Anyway, so I was on some island in uh, Indonesia called, uh, called Lombok. And uh, there was some Rasta bar. And I was like, maybe I'll find weed there. That's generally the rule. If you find any Rasta bar, you can find weed there. But you got to be a fucking man about it. And I'm not one, okay? I, I don't have the courage. So I went into this Rasta bar, I kind of looked around for a while, and then I just left. I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it. I couldn't be like, you have marijuana? I get scared, you guys. I get scared. Maybe if I already had weed, maybe I'd be able to do it, but I didn't. So I'm waiting, and then some guy who was in the uh, hostel I was staying at, who worked there, was like, um, he was like, gonna drive me, I was getting surf lessons there, and I was like, he was like, gonna drive me, but then he was like, I can't, because I gotta go, I'm going to buy marijuana. I was like, oh, you're going to buy marijuana? Can you, can you get me some, too? And he was like, yeah, sure. He goes, how much do you need? I'm like, not very much. I was going to be there for two days. And he's like, give me 500,000 rupees, which is like $45, <laughs> which is a lot, right? So he's like, yeah, I can get you like, so I'm like, no, no, I don't need, I just need like, like 50,000 rupees worth. Like just, like I'll be here for two days. There's no way. And he goes, yeah, but I don't have enough money to buy it for myself. Like I need the five, you need to get me like a lot so I can. And I'm like, how am I going to sell 500,000 rupees worth of weed? And two, but like, whatever, fucking, I'll smoke a bunch and then I'll just get rid of the rest. Anyway, so this guy took my money, went to an ATM. I was like, I only have 300,000. He's like, go to an ATM. I was like, mm, this seems so shady. <laughs> so I went, I got another 200,000 rupees and then I gave it to him and then he left. And then I was like, oh, he's gone forever. There's no way I'm going to 
There's no way I'm gonna see that guy again. <laughs> also, I can't tell fucking Indonesians apart. <laughs> I just learned Asians. Like, I just got it. <laughs> so he was gone, and then, uh, and then that night I was like, hey, where's it to the guy who worked at the place? I was like, where's your brother? Your brother took 500000 for me, and he was supposed to get me something. He was like, what was he supposed to get you? I'm like, it doesn't matter what he was supposed to get me. <laughs> and he, was, he was supposed to get me something, and he's not there. I went to his shop where he worked. He wasn't there. Finally, he was like, what do you need? I was like, he's supposed to get me marijuana. He's supposed to buy me marijuana. He didn't better buy it for me. So I, I tracked him down. Made, made a shop, was like, hey, where's, I forget the guy's name, whatever it was. And they were like, I'll be back in an hour. I left, came back in an hour, still not there, came back another hour. And I was like, hey, where's my weed? And he's like, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> yeah, I have that for you. And he went to the back and he pulled out, and I'm telling you, it was like that much weed. <laughs> it was that much. And I was like, are you kidding me? And normally when you get fucking robbed in anywhere like that, you just take it and you walk away. You go lesson learned. But I was like, bullshit. No fucking way. And he was like, I was like, that's, that's $45 of the weed? LA prices you get that much. And he was like, trust me, bro. And I'm like, I don't trust you. At all. I don't trust you. And he's like, smell it. It's good. I'm like, I can look at it. It's browner than any kind of brown I've ever seen. This would be the Crayola color brown, would be this kind of weed. And he's like, smell it. I'm like, yeah, that's nothing, man. That's nothing. So I took it. I smoked it. What was I going to do? I can't fucking return it. You can't return drugs. It's a major problem. And then, uh, whatever, it got me like a little high. And he was like, mix it though, you should mix it, it'll last longer. Cause I'm like, this is gonna last me fucking four hours. He was like, no, you mix it with tobacco. And I'm like, what is it with you people? <laughs> Europeans and black people, those are the only ones who do that. Anyway, the story really doesn't have anything I realize. <laughs> I smoked it, whatever. <laughs> Whatever, I smoked it all, and then I found some other people from Seattle who found better weed. Uh, I'll tell you another story, but I got too far to go that it's not to do with marijuana, because that was garbage. Do they have, like, uh, Thank you. like a central location here for a 420 celebration? Do they allow that okay. one day a year? No. They don't really? <laughs> yes, come on, for yourselves. People would ask me too while I was gone, they're like, uh, what do you think about Trump? That's all they would ask me. What about Trump? At first I was like, yeah, I don't know, nobody likes him. And then uh, after a while I would just be like, he's amazing, people love him where I'm from. <laughs> Most everybody says he's awesome. <laughs> so, okay, here I'll tell you the story. This doesn't have to do with weed, but everyone else can tell a weed story. But um, everything there is built for Asians, and they're short. You understand what it's like, you're tiny, right? That's all you do. 5'11? Uh, you're lying. Um, maybe you are, I don't know, you're sitting down. Anyway, it's hard to find shoes, you go in there, and you're like, what size shoe are you? Like 11 and a half, like, no, no, that's not a size for shoes. It only goes up to eight. Like, it does not go up to eight. It's just hard to find everything. Anyway, I was in Vietnam and I was taking some overnight bus to a city called Chodong. Doesn't matter, you've never heard of it. I shouldn't. Awful. But I got to the bus station and I'm like, uh, they have these sleeper buses that go like all the way back. And then the picture looks really good. Like, oh, you can fucking sleep. And they like contour, you know, so it's like perfect to sleep in. But it's built for someone who's 5'7. So you can't like, you sleep in it and you can't like fit in there. Anyway, they told me to see it. And they're like, listen, it's either on the top level or on the bottom level or the middle. So I'm looking through pictures to try to figure out what's better top or middle and the bottom. And uh, as I looked at pictures, all the pictures I found were uh, this, this Futu, this was the name of the bus company, Futu Bus Company, and they were like, the pictures were all like people saying, hey, don't drive with Futu because they crash and people die. <laughs> like all the time. And there's all these pictures of like burned out shells with double decker buses. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, 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 but what's the, what's the most comfortable place to die in? Like top or bottom middle? Because there's three levels. There's a window, window, and then a middle section, and then whatever. So. People were like, no, it's fine, you're six fine. So I got the middle, I got the middle and the back. And then there's this like, okay, I'm trying to illustrate this. Long row, long row, long row. I, I, in the back, it's like five seats together. But no one sits back there. So I'm in the back row before this back, back row. I'm trying to fucking fit in this, in this awful fucking five, seven bed. You can't go to the side because they contour it, you know? 
I'm sitting there, and this guy next to me, no one, no Americans, no white people, Westerlings, they don't take those buses. <laughs> you know, those are for local people. And so he was looking at me, and I saw him taking a picture, you know, when somebody's taking a picture of you because you're wearing a stupid shirt or something. <laughs> and you can tell, so I could tell he was taking a picture of me, and at first I was upset, and I was like, oh, who gives a shit, you know? So I was like, sorry, hey, take a picture. So he took like a selfie of both of us, and uh, he was all happy, and then he posted it to Facebook, and he's like, look, I was like, oh, cool. And, uh, and whatever, and we tried to talk through Google Translate, but it didn't really, it uh, needs some work. If anybody works for Google, it does not work that well at all. You end up going like, uh, like, hey, where can I eat? And it'll just like translate something else, and they're like, they give like a sleep sign. And they're like, no, no, where can I, all right, this is not working at all. Anyway, at some point, no one's in the backpack row, and this, we're going eight or nine hours in the middle of the night, and the backpack row, I can like lounge out sideways and actually sleep, so I'm like, maybe I'll go back there. So we get to like a rest stop, and I go back there, right? And Asians, by the way, have no sense of like space. Like if you're in a line, you guys all flown, right? At some point, you know how like you're in line at TSA and then someone just keeps smashing your, your shit and you look back and it's always an Asian person? And you're like, there's nowhere to go. Why are you smashing my shit? Like, right? I'm like, no, not right. And they just cough on their neck and you're like, can you cover up? I'm like, nah. Anyway, that's normally what I'm dealing with. Where I got my own fucking seat, and I'm like, I'm gonna go back there. I'm gonna go back there, and no one's there. So I went back there, and the dude, who was like friendly, he like looks after this rest stop. He's like, he doesn't see me, right? And he's like, take care of me, which is fine. So I was back there, so I just kind of like waved, and he like looked at me, and I was like, kind of like, hey, I'm okay, you know? And I was like, diagonal back there. And he was like, he looked back, and I was like, waved again. I'm like, do you see me? Like, I'm here. Anyway. Then he just gets out of his chair and just climbs over me. <laughs> so I'm like, this, like diagonal like this, and he just climbed and just like rests that way. <laughs> like, what the fuck, man? So I'm like, all right, you'll take those two, I guess, and I'll take these two, and then we'll have just the middle, I guess, as the opening. So I went away from diagonal, and I just went here, and then he just grabbed my dick. <laughs> And I was like, what? No, oh no. Did I give you a, a sign? Because not at all. Yeah, and then we just both laid there for like 45 seconds to a minute. Like both thinking about the signs that I must have been putting out. Dude, men are fucking ballsy. Not even like, so what's your name, anything? Just let's go back there, like, let's take, I'm like, right here on this bus? There's people right in the row in front of us? Front left, there's some dude right there. You're just gonna fucking jerk me off? And we laid there for like 45 seconds or a minute, and I'm like, what do I do? I felt unsafe. And then I guess he realized like, okay, this guy's not gonna give it up. Maybe I'm a tease or a prude or something. I don't know. And then he went back to his his seat, and I just lay there for like another minute or two. I'm like, what am I supposed to do here? I went back to my 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 stuff was there. I'm like, is he gonna steal my stuff? I got worried about it, and then I realized like, oh, gay people aren't thieves. That's not like that. <laughs> those are separate things. And then I slept for a while. When I woke up, he was gone. <laughs> I got hit on a bunch of times in Southeast Asia. They love, I, I, was in, I was in Myanmar, and then uh, I was walking along, some guy's like, are you okay? They're very friendly in Myanmar, it's part of their culture. And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. He's like, are you here alone? And I was like, yeah, you know, yeah. Just going to a bar. He's like, oh, cool. And then he gave me a piece of paper with his uh, number written on it that he'd already written. He had this fucking piece of paper <laughs> already written. It wasn't like his card or anything. This fucking bill, whatever, just number. And he was like, here you go, if you need anything, call me. I was like, oh, okay, it's very friendly, but uh, I'm okay. He's like, oh, okay. Do you want to fuck? And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and I'm like, no. He's like, oh, no, okay, well, let's talk. Let's talk now. I'm like, no, no, the conversation is over. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's good to be back, you guys. <laughs> so, you guys ready to start the show? I was a little nervous before I went on. The last time I took up eight days, you know what I did? I, I was so scared I couldn't even go on stage. I would drive to the comedy store to go on stage, park, get out of my car, walk to the comedy store, get there, turn around, walk back to my car, get in my car, and drive home. Like, I was too frightened to go on after taking eight days off. 
You know what I had to do? I, I, since my first time on stage, after those eight days, I had to go on and just commit to not saying a word for three minutes. <laughs> yeah, a three-minute set. So I just went on there, pulled the tape recorder out, and like put it down, and then like. <laughs> I was like, you can't bomb worse than not talking, so it'll be fine. <laughs> and then I made it to the three minutes, and I was fine again. I was like legitimately nervous. You guys were a cool group of people for helping me through it. <laughs> By the way, also, we are doing a show on, what's today, Thursday, on Saturday at Third Man Records. We're recording an album. So, yeah, if you guys want to come, you should come. Different stories. It's all uh, my first time. So I can't talk about the first time I got my dick grabbed, because you guys have already heard that. <laughs> I mean, I keep replaying it in my mind. I'm like, what did I put out? Oh, let's take a selfie together, and the is not like, oh, he wants it back. <laughs> So yeah, come to Third Man. It's like 8 o'clock on, uh, on Saturday. The tickets are on the website, the Wild West Comedy Tour, or Third Man Records. So, and the money's going to the ACLU, which represents, you know what they represent? Do you know what they represent, the ACLU? Oh, not next to us. It's um, <laughs> so helping you with selfie. Impoverished people. I think black people and gays. <laughs> and Jews, too. I think everything. Everyone's... Fucked over by Trump, I think. It's the main. <laughs> so they made the deal. Do you know what it stands for? Does anyone know what ACLU stands for? Oh, great. Fucking Wormwood. <laughs> you were right there with that, weren't you? American Civil Liberties Union. Yeah, we should help them. Absolutely. All proceeds go to the American Civil Liberties Union. Absolutely. That sounds good. Fucking <laughs> dork. <laughs> This is going to be a fun show. <laughs> cool. Ladies and gentlemen, a friend of mine from New York. You guys will absolutely love him. He opens up for the, uh, for the Impractical Jokers. He writes for them, too. Uh, he's Big J. Opus's roommate. You guys know Big J? Yeah! yeah. yeah. His roommate. Ladies and gentlemen, please get up. Bring us my friend, Mr. Mike Fanoia, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. All times that you suffer from white privilege. And uh, one of them. The rest were fine, whatever, but one of them was, uh, you go to a record store and find the music of your people represented. And I wanted to write a comment, uh, white people don't go to record stores anymore. <laughs> we download things. <laughs> they get a laugh. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you guys ready for more? Yeah! Hell yeah, some people. Still not clapping. Ladies and gentlemen, very, very for the woman. She's been on my show before. She's been on This Is Not Happening before. You guys will absolutely love her. One of the best comics in New York. Miss Lisa Traeger, everybody. Let her go. Peter came to fuck, by the way. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> brother Peter didn't really lead me to it. It was about to mock you. Uh, Lisa Traeger, one more time, you guys. Give it up for Lisa Traeger. <laughs> that was very short. Yeah, okay, that's right. All right, we got more show. You guys having a good time still? <laughs> who's, gonna come, who's gonna come to that third man show on Saturday? One, two, yeah, you're allowed, it's not a problem. You're like, what, yeah, am I not? Yeah, sure, all right, you're coming, you're coming. Third man? Okay, 10 bucks, third man, it's a record store. That I do record, all right. You know what I'm really good at as a host? Screeching everything to a halt. A lot of comments keep it going, but to really screech it? <laughs> We're at the top of the game, you guys. <laughs> All right, this next, fuck you. This next, uh, <laughs> next comic is one of my favorites in the world, you guys. Oh, the next two are gonna be fucking amazing. But probably told my best story, my favorite story of all time. Oh, there's not happening. And the next two, maybe the top two stories. Eh, all right, I rest I should like ruminate about it while well, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Screech, man. I fucking screech that shit. But, <laughs> screech. All right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Mexican Island Boots, you guys remember that story? Please give it up for Mr. Ali Sadiq. Give it up for him, everybody. <laughs> comedy when you have a procedure check and like, you're like, oh, I gotta pay this. It's tough, because as a comedian, I want your attention, but as a Jew, it's like, obviously. <laughs> Deal with the money situation. No, no. So, you know, I'm torn. Uh, anyway, so I'll just tell you. 
I'll ask you, okay, two stories. One's marijuana and one's nothing to do with it. Uh, I can tell you the story about uh, when I, I shit my pants on the Sydney Harbor Bridge or, um, or uh, when I got caught uh, hiding marijuana edibles in uh, the Mall of America. Edibles! Edibles! I asked the wrong way, clearly, because I can't tell what you guys are saying. Who wants, uh, who wants a Sydney Harbor story? Okay, and the marijuana Mall of America story? I got one, fine, calm down. You fucking overdid it. You won the popular vote, but the electoral college says you did not <laughs> That's one person from each table. I'm like, oh, turns out you lost. I'm not out. So strange. Hey, let's do nothing to change the system in four years. How do we do that? Uh, all right, so here's what I do, you guys. I, I smoke weed, and I like to do weed. I told you, I learned in the, in, the, in the medical marijuana system of Los Angeles, the fucking gentlemanly way. Uh, and we get pot edibles there. They're fucking made with fucking sealed wraps. It tells you exactly how strong it is. 1x, or 2x, or 3x, or 4 or 5x. Uh, all sorts of different types. And what I would do is I would take them and I would do them all over. I would go to UFCs and I would do them there. Yeah, my friend, my friend with Joe Rogan, he gets tickets to UFC, so. Yeah, and they're fun. The first five or six are great, but then after a while, you're like, these are boring. It's the same shit. People are beating each other up. I get it. Let's add some drugs. You have to. People are like, well, how do you smuggle like uh, drugs into the UFC? I'm like, you just hide them in your stomach, and then no one will look for them. There. <laughs> and it's totally fine. No one will ever look inside your stomach for drugs. I guarantee you. One time, I actually had them in there because I went in with him, like underneath, like the stadium, and so I was like eating this, like like a, a Jolly Rancher, a pot Jolly Rancher. And I was like, talking like that, and then somebody next to me was like, somebody's smoking weed in here. Like you could smell it coming off the candy. And I was like, yeah. Somebody is, huh? <laughs> I don't know who it is. Somebody's got some balls. And it's a great way to watch fights. It's great. I mean, it really is. You zonk out. Me and Joey Diaz, the other guy, we like, we watch him. We take something. Yeah. And we'd sit there for like 35, 40 minutes. It hasn't kicked in. We'd look at each other like, is it kicked in for you? And we'd be like, no, you? And I'm like, no, not really. And then we wait. And then like 10 minutes later, you'd just be like. <laughs> and then you look over and he's just like. Like, okay, it's fucking in. You guys, these pot edibles, especially some of them, they're like six hour rides. They are great. They take you to another planet and they're fucking amazing. Los Gumis Hermanos, they're some of the best. Whatever you get, you get. And it's great, it's a great way to watch fights. You watch them fucking zonk out. Not the best way to like know who's winning a fight. You watch after like five rounds, like who's winning? They're like, I don't know, they're both sweating really hard, so. But I know they're both trying. So at some point, you know, I would talk about it on podcasts about how I, you know, take pot edibles at UFCs, and uh, people were like, that sounds so fun. So what I started doing was like, I'm going to bring some for people. <laughs> yeah, just for random people. I did it in Nashville once for UFC, actually. And I would have like a, like a scavenger hunt. Yeah, I would hide, because I go there the day before, because Joe Rogan does the weigh-ins, so then they, they lock off like half the stadium. And then the, the fans just sit on one half, and the other half is all like empty, and I can just walk around there, and I can just hide stuff. If it's a Jolly Rancher, or even better, like a breath strip, they have these pop breath strips. They come two to a pack. They're in a, a pack like this big. One of those Ziploc bags, you know? Those little Ziploc bags that are only for drugs, nothing else. There's literally nothing else a bag this big is for. Like a Ziploc. So there's two breath strips in there. The proper dose is half of one. Yeah, so it's for four people, and it gets you high for six hours. It's fucking amazing. One time I took one in the third rush up, and I was high for 27 hours. <laughs> yeah, it's legit. So what I would do is I would hide them, I would take them somewhere, and then I'd write a bunch of clues on Twitter, and I would release them every minute. I would time them to release every minute after like the first two fights. Let's say the fight started at 7, at 8 o'clock, I would just start releasing clues. The first clue would be like, go upstairs, if you want to get high, get higher, you know? And that means on floor two, you know? The first one I did, I hid underneath the men's uh, bathroom sink. And some guys were fucking following around, they got to the sink, like, uh, and they went under. I'm like, oh yeah, who knows? And I was like, I was right on there, like, you know, here's a proper dose. I didn't want anybody to get fucked up, you know? And if a kid got it, obviously, you know, have a great time. I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's gonna stunt your growth, but it's worth it. It's worth it. It was so cool. And, uh, so I started doing it everywhere. It was fun. It was really fun. I started doing a lot of UFCs. Like pretty much everyone I went to, people were like, you're gonna have, I call it the hunt for the edible. 
And I would hashtag all the things, hunt for the edible. And then as soon as I was done with it, I would delete all the clues, because I didn't want the cops on me. Just fucking, you know, I'm Robin Hood. I'm just here to fucking get out weed to the needy. Because people don't have access to weed. You guys don't have access to just go buy in a store a goddamn powerful edible. So it was fun. Sometimes I would go check to see if anybody got it. And I remember going, I can tape it to like the bottom of a pillar, like right there. No one will see it if you're not looking for it. And I would go by to look to see if it was still there. I'd kind of go like this. And an usher one time, he came out and he goes, what you're looking for is no longer here. <laughs> yeah, I guess a lot of people follow the clues. Because once the first guy gets it, everybody else doesn't know. And they just keep going. And they're just like, it's supposed to be here somewhere. <laughs> oh man, it was fun. What a fun game. And so eventually I started doing it in my comedy shows. I would just be like, fuck it. Why do I have to be the UFC for this? You know, let's just go and do it like everywhere. And I would go through what I did in Austin once. I hit uh, a pregnant lady, kind of pop lollipop. <laughs> yeah, she goes, is this safe for, for pregnant people to, to, to take? And I was like, I don't think they've done any studies on that at all. <laughs> I don't think anyone's donating money to research uh, effects of marijuana edibles on pregnant people. So yeah, I mean, you know, do the research. Fucking figure it out. <laughs> let's, let's see what your, uh, <laughs> how your baby is. If he's smart, then yeah, tell people. He's fucked up, and I guess, yeah, tell people that, too. Um, I saw somebody, side note, I saw somebody in Calgary once at a truck stop outside Calgary, pregnant, eight months pregnant, smoking a cigarette. And yeah, it looked so weird, and I was like, gonna say something to her, but then I was like, that kid's already got no chance. <laughs> You've got a mom who's smoking at eight months pregnant outside a truck stop, and ain't like you're gonna be a Nobel Prize winner. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, I started hiding at, at, at shows. Like I did it once in Philadelphia where I just hid it underneath somebody's chair. I just taped it, like these pop friendships, they hide so easily, a little bit of tape. I hid it under the chair and then I would like write like, hey, look under your chair after shows. Somebody finds it, fucking you win. If no one finds it, the next show, it'll still be there. And then after the first show, Wednesday night, uh, these kids waited until everybody left and they just opened up all the chairs, they turned them all over until they found it. And somebody's like, that's cheating. And I'm like, it's not, there's no rules to this. <laughs> Just hiding drugs and finding it. They got, they, got they got the drugs. I don't know. Yeah, one time I thought I got caught, but I didn't. But um, anyway, there's one time I was in Minnesota. There's a comedy club at the Mall of America. Perfect place to hide marijuana. It's not legal there. It's very illegal. And Mall of America, such a fucking prudish place. And I was like, yeah, let me take this fucking game, this hunt for the edible, to Mall of America. So I hit some breath strips. I hit some pop breath strips, you know. In an underwear aisle of a J Crew. <laughs> and then I wrote a bunch of clues. <laughs> it's fun to watch people too. Like after shows, sometimes you see people like the people that were playing, the five or six that would follow me would be running around like if it was here. If it's not, if I can relax, I came from Indonesia. But uh, <laughs> people would like run upstairs and run over there, then run outside, and then somebody would go, I got it! And everyone else would go, fuck! It was so much fun to watch. <laughs> so I hit these uh, these pop breast chips in a, in a J Crew, and uh, and then I started writing clues, and eventually, you know, somebody got it, I guess. And then uh, I was outside my show, waiting to go on. I was texting on my uh, LG MV. <laughs> um, remember that phone? Fucking flipped up, full keyboard, baller. <laughs> I've actually, since I've gone back to a flip phone, I've actually looked for that phone and then uh, I've gotten one on eBay, and then I've tried to start it, and like it doesn't work. You can't use it anymore. <laughs> Great Zumba though on there. Anyway, so, anyway, I'm outside, I'm texting, and then all of a sudden, uh, I hear somebody just go, uh, Ari, uh, can I talk to you for a second? And I looked up, and it was a, uh, a Minnesota state sheriff. Yeah, and I was like, what? And I looked on my other side, it's a Mall of America cop on either side of me. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> and he goes, uh, the, mall, the state sheriff, he goes, did you hide a, Marijuana and a, and a J. Crew. And uh, he's gonna deny it, you know, but he didn't just guess that. <laughs> it wasn't like he was asking everybody, hey, did you have any marijuana and J. Crew? I almost got you. Hey, thanks for question. Did you have marijuana and J. Crew? Oh, I'm gonna get this guy eventually. Like it was a very pointed question, you know? So there's no sense in denying it. It was too dead on. And I was like, okay, yeah, yes, I did. And he was like, uh, what was it? It was a uh, breast strip. I was like, yeah, it was a marijuana breast strip. It's got marijuana in it. 
and he was like, uh, does it make your breath smell good? <laughs> I was like, good question. No, it does not. <laughs> Actually, the one, the one use of a breath strip is not, it does not take that. <laughs> not accomplish that one fact makes your breath smell a lot like marijuana actually. <laughs> if you have a regular breath strip after that, that comes in handy for sure. In fact, they should almost definitely put in three breath strips in those bags. <laughs> Two marijuana breath strips and then a regular breath strip to cover up the marijuana taste. And uh, he goes, I don't understand, did you sell this stuff? And I was like, no, I don't sell it, I give it out. And he's like, what do you, what? What do you mean? And I was like, listen, in California, we get medical grade marijuana all the time, and I feel bad for people to not get it. And um, so, like, uh, like Robin Hood, I, um, I give out uh, marijuana to people, and then they have it, and then that's the end of it. And then the Mall of America cop was like, okay, you're banned from the mall for sure. Uh, we gotta get you out of here. And I was like, dude, I gotta perform in like 20 minutes. Like the opener's on right now. I gotta tell them that I might probably not be able to perform for the rest of the week. Uh, so I went over there and uh, I let them know. They got the owner on the phone. The owner lived in Edmonton, Cali uh, Canada, not California. And uh, yeah, he, he talked to me and he was like, hey, listen. He called and he was like, listen, no matter what I say, uh, don't smile. And I was like, okay, what? What do you mean? He's like, I talked to the owner of the mall. The mall cops are not gonna be a problem for you. They'll, they'll let you perform. But um, the state sheriff, like, that, you're fucking, you're going to jail. I mean, there's no way around that. I, can't, I have no sway with them whatsoever. I don't have a store in the state. I just have it in this mall. So, uh, and he was like, but tell me this. Like, did you hide acid in a fucking H&M? <laughs> And I was like, no, is that what people are saying? And he goes, yeah, I'm like, no, I ate marijuana in a J. Crew. <laughs> and he was like, just like a bunch of weed? I'm like, no, it's in a bread strip, a pot bread strip. And he's like, oh, I heard about those. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, can you bring me some next time you go to Edmonton? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, 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 I might not be able to go to Edmonton anymore. I have a joke. <laughs> Charge off it. He's like, ah, oh, fuck. All right, well. He goes, I'm not mad. Whatever happens, happens. Don't worry about it. And I was like, thanks, man. And he's like, I can tell you're smiling, don't smile. I told you, it was like, you have to act like I'm yelling at you. So I was like, all right, fine. So I went back to the cop and the Mall of America. She left, the Mall of America left. She was, by the way, nothing to do with the story, so fucking hot. <laughs> One of the hottest people I've ever seen. And in a fucking cop outfit, it was like, wow. I always wanted to be like, hey, can I, I mean, can we hang out or something? <laughs> I didn't go for it though, but uh, so in the Mall of America, no, the, uh, the Minnesota State Trooper, he was like, so explain to me this again. So, you got these marijuana breast strips. Uh, they don't make your breast smell good. He goes, he goes, uh, and you just give them out. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, why? I'm like, I just care about people, dude. And there's nothing wrong with it. You know, why deny it at some level? And he goes, so are these, are these real breast strips or are these fake breast strips? Like, are these marijuana breast strips or like actual breast strips? And I'm like, they're marijuana breast strips. And he goes, no, 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 that's not my question. Were those real breast strips or were those marijuana breast strips? <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I heard your question the first time. <laughs> what do you think I didn't understand about that? I told you, they're marijuana breast strips. And he was like, no, no, shh, idiot, idiot. Listen to, <laughs> Listen to the question I'm asking you out loud. <laughs> were those real breast strips or were they marijuana breast strips? And I was like, why? Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> Before I didn't get it, but now I get it. Now I get it. Because before, don't worry about that, because that was when I didn't get it. But now I do get it, so now I'm going to answer you for real. They were real breast strips. They were actually real breast strips. And he goes, okay, well, that's just mischief. There's no problem there. Um, I'll let you off. Just go apologize to the manager of the J. Crew. And I did, you know. I guess here's what happened. Here's what I found out. I guess people, uh, the first guy followed all the clues and went to the J. Crew, and uh, he went to the underwear aisle, and he was like, oh, cool, I fucking won, and he left. You know, and then someone else was like two minutes behind, following the same clues, and they got to the underwear aisle, and they were like, oh, nothing's here, and then they just started fucking. <laughs> throwing the underwear around, like, it's here somewhere, I know these clues. Until they got kicked out, you know? And then they had to like fold the underwear. Why did you fold the underwear? They folded the underwear and put it back, and then like three minutes after that, somebody else came in. 
and they were just having their underwear aisle just destroyed over and over again. Like random fucking hippies, you know? And then at some point, somebody found out. One of the employees was like, hey, look, somebody sent me this thing. So anyway, I went to them, and I was like, hey, I'm really sorry if you've had any damages. They're like, no, no damages, but just, like, don't use our name for anything. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, it wasn't a J. Crew. Uh, it was something else. I forgot about that. They did ask me specifically if I was in the store. All right, it was a Banana Republic, if anybody asked you. Um, yeah, and I got let off with no problems whatsoever. Yeah, and that. And that's when I realized uh, what white privilege means. <laughs> yeah, when a cop lets you off of a drug charge and talks you out of getting one. It's great, you guys. White privilege. It's fucking great. It's fucking wonderful. All right. You guys ready for the last comment? <laughs> Hell yeah. Did you pay your bills? Idiots? All right. I don't know what I call my audience idiots all the time. Did you get yours yet? No, I Oh, you did. You paid it so slightly. Did you pay it? Oh, all right. Did they give you the check? Relax, they're not fighting.